All right, we'll start with Jared Greenberg. Coach, when we talk about home court advantage, do we in the media make too much of it? Or on nights like last night when you only have 5,000 and certainly tomorrow when you're going to have near a full house, it, how, how much of an actual practical difference do you find that it's made in the NBA for home teams? There's a reason why people play for home court all year. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's great to play in front of fans anywhere. And I think we're all even more thankful for that since our experiences in the bubble and then earlier in this year. Um, I'm, I'm happy for our guys that have been here the last two years in particular that haven't, you know, especially our second year players and, you know, a couple of our guys that have been in the playoffs here before that have played in these big playoff games and these big moments, but did so not in front of fans. And I'm, I'm thankful that they get a chance to experience, um, you know, what the playoffs are like and, uh, and what the environments are like. And um, so, you know, at the end of the day, you, you have to do your job well um, inside the lines um, you know, on the court and that's whether you're at home or on the road. Uh, but the, um, you know, the fans and having fans back in the building, um, you know, again, home or on the road is a special part of competing at this time of the year. Ryan Rob. Hey Brad, just wanted to check you for an update on how Rob's, uh, coming out of last night with his, the ankle and then the toe and um, how Ken was doing after playing three minutes on, with his uh, bone bruise on the knee there. Yeah, Kimba was sore today. Um, I think that um, he'll go through, you know, some stuff in the morning tomorrow and uh, have a better idea on him. Um, Rob's doubtful. Um, he probably won't do anything in the morning. We'll see how he feels as we get closer to game time. Um, but you saw him last night, even in his stint, I thought he looked pretty limited. And um, so, uh, you know, we're hopeful uh, to have everybody available. But, um, you know, at least in Rob's case, I'd say that's probably doubtful. John Corrales. Brad, the NBA is a little unforgiving in that some guys, they get DNPs for, you know, a few games and all of a sudden they get meaningful playoff minutes against Kevin Durant and James Harden, uh, like Romeo and Grant Williams. How do, how do you, as a coaching staff, prepare these guys for that little bit of a roller coaster of, hey, maybe you'll play, maybe you won't. And then all of a sudden these minutes are super meaningful. Well, the unforgiving part, the part that stinks is if you're on the other side of it, um, like Jabari. Jabari played really well in game one, and I had every intention of playing him last night, but Romeo's first stint went so well um, that we stayed with that. And, uh, you know, I talked to Jabari today about that and um, talked to those guys when they didn't play about staying ready and being prepared because, um, you know, the bottom line is, is, every playoff series and every game is unique. And there are um, certain matchups that make more sense against other teams than not. And then, you know, sometimes you get into the rhythm of a game and something looks good for that night. And so I think you have to stay on your toes. You have to prepare for what you think you're going to do. But, um, you know, with all of our, um, with, with Kimba, being questionable up to yesterday morning with not knowing if Rob was going to play, um, you know, that is an opportunity to tell others to be ready. And, um, and as they go through all their work, you know, you're certainly evaluating um, every little detail um, and thinking about how you would apply it from a coaching perspective in the game. It's not easy to be the guy that doesn't play consistently, um, but it's, you know, it's part of the job. Taylor Snow. Brad, on, on a related note um, with Romeo, obviously it's a big task for him to go in and help defend some of the best scorers in the world. How do you feel that he performed and how do you think his skill set gives you guys a lift in this matchup on that end? 
Uh, I thought he, I thought he did some good things, but you know, I, there was some things on film we, and we went through it today um, that we got to do better, both him and as a team. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's just important. Everybody out there has to defend to their best level. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly nowhere to hide. Gary Washburn. Brad, um, you've made playoff runs with really young teams before or young guys leading you a couple years ago with Jalen and Jason with Kyrie and Gordon were hurt, but your bench is extremely young and inexperienced. How do you kind of maneuver that? Like, how do you let Romeo make mistakes because he's going to make mistakes, but then trust him or Grant or, uh, you know, other guys that you might have to, to go to, but this, this is the game at the highest level a playoff game you're trying to win. So you've got to limit your mistake. How, how tough is that to deal with? Well, I think Gary, you start with the fact that Tatum's going to play 40 plus minutes <laughs> and, uh, and you kind of go from there and fill in um, around with who best fits, right? Smart's going to play 40 plus minutes. You know, Kimba's going to be up there as much as he can, but, um, and then Fournier's got experience and is going to play. But I just think you're trying to find whatever fits best um, again in that against that opponent in that game. And you talk all year long about simplifying the game for young players to do your job, right? Do your job as well as you can. And that shouldn't change when you get to this level. It just gets magnified because everybody's paying attention a lot more than necessarily they were, you know, during the regular season. But um, you know, I think the difference between maybe that team, you know, we, I, I always say that the, one of the great things for both Jalen and Jason this year is they, they really have had to, especially Kimba missed a bunch of the year, Marcus missed a bunch of the year, you know, a lot of the guys that they could lean on for that over the course of their careers aren't here, you know, and even in that run, you, you know, you're talking about Al and Baines and older and Marcus Morris, older guys that have been there and, and kind of been around. And so um, it's a great challenge for Jason now um, and Jalen on the bench, but Jason on the court to, you know, elevate not only himself, but elevate his teammates. And, um, and he's done a really good job of that all year, but that is part of the fun of having a young team, right? Is that you can see guys taking on different roles and, really growing up right in front of you. All right, I'll wrap it up right there. Thanks, coach. Thanks.